Right. Who the hell do we think you are on a Friday night off the ball talking about the Leinster Hurling Championship? We've gone full cray-cray because it's actually the game of the weekend in some aspects. Kilkenny against Dublin, I'm delighted to say. Ronald Dwyer is with us to help preview the game, but not really so much preview the game as look back, Ryan, at a time when you guys broke what looks like, I'm, I'm trying to do the mats on the hoof, uh, 2013 all the way back to 1942. One of the longest famines in hurling, a uh, Dublin win over Kilkenny in the championship. Um, yeah, and like we, yeah, we won uh, eventually. It, it went to a replay, but uh, we got over the line eventually. And it was gas after the after the draw the first day. Everyone was saying our chance is gone. You don't get two chances against Kilkenny, but thankfully we pulled it off. But in one way it feels like yes, and in another way it feels like a million years ago. So it's mad the way it goes. Uh, in a way, it kind of established Dublin properly. That that group, sorry, because obviously there was a, a league win before that, but established Dublin as a proper tier one team and I mean they should always have been but for whatever reason they weren't uh, that's why these matches that you guys were a part of over that period of time where you went out to toe with Kilkenny and beat Wexford and uh, and put it up to Galway at various stages as well uh, that was actually a really important moment in the history of Dublin Hurling it, it was in so many ways I suppose we we just started getting successful in 2011 um, just before the footballers and there was a bit of a buzz around then when the footballers won the Ireland kind of took away from it but only to a small extent like it was still a lot of hurling people but yeah I suppose 11 and 13 really define um, Dublin hurling over the last what 30, 40 years um, it's just that that period uh, really defines it and I was lucky to be part of it some great great players that have come from it. Some of them are still there, um, part of the, the present panel, but um, it would be ju- it would do so much for, for hurling in the capital if they could just, I'm not saying they have to win any All-Ireland, but just to get them competitive to, to win a Leinster title or a league title and maybe get to an All-Ireland semi-final. I think that would, that would be, br- that would be huge um, to start with. Take us back to 2013 before we, we talk about the team this weekend and the impact that it might have, the, the wider impact. The, the headline on the uh, report is that you've blown the championship wide open at that stage because, I mean, let's face it, that was an absolutely amazing and stacked Kilkenny team that you guys were up against. Yeah, it was. And, like, they had won so much. They were all they were all big, strong, physical men and all well able to hurl and they, they were so... they were so experienced in everything they, they did, the way they carried themselves, the way they behaved, um, even away from the pitch. Um, everything they did was just so professional. Um, in an amateur world, it was professional. Um, but yeah, I suppose that that summer, it, 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 and not just the Dublin, it was it, the whole championship was blown out. Um, because you 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 looked at the the previous All Ireland winners or the contesting All Irelands, right? In two between two thousand eleven two thousand twelve, you had Tip, Galway, and Kilkenny, and a couple of weeks after we bet. Uh, Kilkenny in the Leinster Championship well the three of those teams were out um, so it, it, yeah it really did blow it up now, not beating Kilkenny but later on in that year it was, it was certainly blown out of the water I know you could say your traditional county of Cork were there in the semi-final and then and ultimately got to the final but they had been down for a few years they, they hadn't won since uh, 2006 so it was or five, five or six, but it, it was it was massive just to get the the changes. Um, and from a neutral point of view, looking in and not being the same teams again and again and again. What was the difference between the first week and the second week? How did you manage to not blow your chance, basically? Because that's the received wisdom, especially against a team like Kilkenny. Well, do you know what? I I go actually back further. Um, the first day. Um, against Wexford down Wexford Park, we should have been bet that day. We were we were bet with a few minutes to go, and Eamon Dillon scored a scored a, a goal to bring us back into bring it bring it into a replay. Um, only for that, no one will be talking about 2013. Um, if we got bet in that game, I don't know what Daly been there in 2014. Um, so it we just built momentum like it, it, the the team that we had out not, I'm not saying personnel but just the way we played the first day against Wexford if we had played against Kilkenny like that if we got Kilkenny to the, the very first day for the championship we would have been bet but it was uh, we, we bet Wexford or sorry we, we drew Wexford bet them in the replay got a bit of momentum for that came up against Kilkenny 
drew with Kilkenny. It was just week after week, and we were we were getting like a lot of people talk about the the championship, the way it's structured, and and a lot of people are giving out now that it's week after week and it's too intense. But if it's managed correctly and does not overload with the players a trend and things like that, it is manageable. And if you're lucky to a certain extent as well with, with injuries. But we with the we'd five games in five weeks between the two Wexford games, two Kilkenny games, and then the, the Galway game and then the final. And we certainly we gathered momentum along the along that time uh, and with those games and different people stood up each game. Um like the the Wexford game, I remember it was Mikey Carton led the won a ball, broke out and led it into Eamon Dillon, uh Trolley for the last the last goal the, the, the to to get to the replay. And then the following day after that, the the Wexford game, Dotsie and Paul Ryan had crackers. Um, the, the first day against Kilkenny, um, Danny Sutcliffe and uh, Connell Keeney played very good. Um, then I'll have to say Dotsie again because he just loves himself. But uh, <laughs> and set himself and, and Niall Corcoran and um, Stephen Heine. Like I, I, I think the, the the second day against Kilkenny, I don't think anyone played bad. Um, like I, I wasn't happy with how I played, but we won, so I couldn't care how I played. Um, but a lot of people stood up that day and said, "We're we're not here to just make up the numbers." And then the the Galway game from the very start, everything just went right for us. The bounce, you know, you get days like that where the bounce of the ball goes your way, and it certainly did that day for us. I I just looked up the score in the final, two twenty five to two thirteen. It's an annihilation of Galway. Yeah, and it's a scoreline that you'd see now. Um, like the the scorelines you see now, especially with Limerick and the the, the teams playing at Watford as well. Like it, they, they score two twenty eight or two thirty one or th- things like that. Um, but yeah, it was like I said already. It was just one of those days where just every single bounce of the ball went our way. Nothing, nothing went wrong. When you were in the middle of that season, or kind of in the build up to the Leinster final, do you feel like? Dublin have arrived and this is never going to change and you're always going to be one of those teams who are capable of competing for a Leinster title and you know if you can win a Leinster title with that Kilkenny team in the draw then you're actually all Ireland contenders de facto or did it feel like this was something unique and individual and the season had taken on its own life? Right well look there's a few questions you've asked there I suppose that year specifically, we had learned a lot of a lot of excuse, a lot, a lot of excuse, a lot of um, lessons from 2012. Like after 2011, winning the league, getting to an All Ireland semi final, and you know holding our own in the semi final, we thought, oh, it, it's going to happen. And then we went down in 2012 when we were trust we didn't win any game. So I think we learned an awful lot of lessons in 2013, and Delo was the man to to guide us in the right direction. Um, but then. Yeah, like I suppose we we remained grounded in 2013 um, throughout the year. And I suppose with the, the games week after week after week, we didn't have time to get carried away. We didn't have time to, to lose our head and and think about it really. Um, but I, I certainly think Delo and, and the rest of the management team, they, they managed as well and they kept our feet on the ground to say, yeah, look, next day is the one that matters. You're only as good as your next game. I was supposed to answer the next question that, that you, you, you put as well. Did we think it was going to happen year after year? Um, we knew that nothing lasts forever. Um, we were very disappointed in 2014. We, we had a poor year um, by our standards, but maybe we thought it might have gone on longer. It didn't, but we certainly didn't think, oh, we're going to be contesting finals every year because you need, no, this is just personally, you need that that conveyor belt to one or two lads coming through every year um, to, I suppose, to freshen things up um, and to challenge and, and to, to take lads out of their comfort zone, lads that may be established on the team, to take them out of their comfort zone and say, well, that's not your spot. It, 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 it's going to be mine soon, you know. Um, you did have quite a wait then before the All-Ireland semi-final and you end up coming up against the Cork team who go on to lose the final against Clare. <laughs> What happened to you in the semi-final that you weren't able to reproduce the form from the the previous two games against Kilkenny in the Leinster final? Well, I, I, geez, I won't come up with issues that we didn't perform. I, I thought we played very well in the, the Cork game. Um, 
I don't think there's anyone that's had a bad game. Um, no, I might say the ref had a bad game, but that's just me personally. Um, <laughs> but yeah, look, I, I don't think that I don't come like I suppose the days after the Cork game. And um, there was a lot of people saying to me this is the best game they've ever seen. Right. So game of the year, game of the year, whatever. So I, I think we played very well. We, we definitely played good enough to to win that game. And I think if we did win that game, well, not saying we would have won the final, but I think the pressure would have been off us because we wouldn't have been the traditional team. All the pressure would have been on Claire and the fact that Davy and Dalo were the two managers. It would have been it would all the attention would have been on them and their relationship and. And how they manage the team. So I, I think pressure wouldn't have been on us at all, and I don't think the media attention would have been on us. Um, so yeah, but look, the, we, we, these are things we'll never know. Is there? It doesn't sound like there's huge regrets, apart from a, a little bit of a, a hangover with the referee. But other than that, it doesn't sound like there's massive regrets from losing that semi final in a way that like so many teams have regrets because something horrific happens, somebody doesn't play well, there's a red card, there's a, a penalty miss or a square ball. Uh, not that we're well, I, about I, that. I think, I think as a, as a t- from a team perspective, I don't think we have any regrets. The only regret is not winning. Um, sure. But I don't think we have any regrets in, in the performance. There's no finger uh, pointing after it. No, no, and there wasn't. Uh, not from the players, anyway, from the public, there might have been a little bit. But um, no, I... I, I I think we, we handled it well. I, I thought we, we played as good as we could have played that day. We could have won it if things were different. Um, from a team point of view, from a personal point of view, yeah, I I, I said it before. Um, I don't think a, a day goes by where I don't think about that game and about that one incident. Or, or if I don't think about it, I'm probably reminded about it. Um, it's usually if I meet someone for the first time, um, I'm introduced to them as... Oh, this is Ryan. He got sent off in all in semi final. It's like, ah, oh, thanks, Rick. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but look, it, it is what it is. You move on, you get on with it. Does I think I think we we've seen over time um, that there's yeah, there's sport and sport is a massive part of your life, but there's a lot more important things than that. I, I'm lucky I have a wife and kids, and um, and you see the people around you that are are, are they might not be connected to you, but you hear stories like. Um, Henry Sheffield and his brother that it puts everything into perspective um, that yeah you appreciate it while you're there but there, there is a life to live as well yeah of course like ultimately time passes and whatever hurt people feel from sports events we should get over that like you know because ultimately this is sport and it's supposed to be enjoyable and entertaining and it's one county's best against another county's best but it's not the life defining thing that uh, sometimes we turn it into no at times it can be a life defining thing or what what people remember you about but i suppose that's that's like the new england patriots to say that the outside noise let that be just let it go over your head and and i certainly do uh some people define me as getting sent off in the ladder and saying fine but uh, i don't i look hurting has been a big part of my life a very important part of my life and I'm doing a lot of coaching and managing now and it will always be a, a massive part of my life but I have a family and in, in as far as I'm concerned that's the most important thing in my life. Uh, coming back out again, in retrospect, was was Dalo the driving force behind the team coming together and coalescing and believing in themselves and when he went, is that why it's taken so long for them to get back to this point where realistically no one's really given them a chance this weekend which is kind of bananas considering how uh, screwed up the league and championship performance have been so um, to start with the Dalo bit before we get to this weekend yeah look Dalo is is special in so many ways um, he makes you think you're invincible if you never and I've said this before if you were never to do a training session but go play in all Ireland final you would believe you could win it but I think the people he had around him as well Richie Stakem Kieran Hederton um, and Declan Coyle um, he was our, our sports psychologist and um, I suppose in 2013 uh, Tony Griffin was there as well um, it was just a, it was a great mix together that we had together that just that, that was all put in the pot and mixed around and this is what we came out with that they all bounced off each other um, and I suppose it was a mixture of getting us at the right time getting us in the right mind frame um, like I said earlier that, that the game against Wexford the first game against Wexford it could have been all over 
Um, so look, it is what it is. But yeah, look, Dalo, he, he's a, an unbelievable character. He he is special, and I think he was the glue that uh, that brought everything together. Um, as regards after that, when Dalo finished and Jer came in, I I think there was a Jer did a lot of hard work because I think there was a there was a transition period, like you see, uh, Tip going through that now. Um, and previous teams before that, there there is a transition period. It's it's very rare. No, it, it is it is achievable. It's very rare. There's a seamless transition. Even you could say like Kenya are going through that change uh, for the last couple of years. And at the moment, I know they they've won Leinster, but they're still going through the change from what they were uh, five six years ago. Um, yeah, I I, I think Jer Jer handled that transition. Um, and I think it's it, it was a natural uh, it was natural that we wouldn't been reaching the same heights but unfortunately it's taken a couple of years to get back to where we want to be The league campaign was going excellently up until Kilkenny arrived in Parnell Park and then Dublin gave one of the you, you can't be shocked by league performance but it was, it was genuinely shocking how flat they were considering the week before they'd gone to Semple and beaten Tip and it was like yeah yeah, yeah. My, my like, I I have a few things about the the league and and the Walsh Cup before that. Like the Walsh Cup, my biggest worry about the Walsh Cup is like what I would use the, the preseason competition for, like the Walsh Cup. I would use it as seeing players that you hadn't seen before, um, and giving them a chance and mixing them in with the more established players. Dublin didn't do that. They had nearly more or less their starting team for all the, the Walsh Cup, about one or two, more or less their starting team. And that was my biggest worry. Then when it came into the league, they, they hit the ground running um, and got off to a brilliant start. I think it was three out of three and then came up against Kilkenny. And I went to that game. I actually missed, missed the first five minutes because next and then 50 on the way over. But uh, but I got in there and I, I suppose five minutes after that, I was I was devastated because I... I, I I suppose hoping and believing that Dublin can can push on from this, um, and especially when I saw the, the Kenny team that was named, it wasn't it didn't strike fear into me. So I said, yeah, they could turn these over, especially when Kenny have to come to Parnell Park. Maybe you, you might so see the doubt in their mind now, and then when they come for championship, yeah, it'll be all guns blazing. But at least you have that. That mental thing over them that or it will, we won here already um but just the performance that night and i know i, I can be critical of, of dublin at times but it's not coming through a, a from a bad place it's coming from a place that I, I know that the players that they have and i know what they can be capable of and, and you saw the early rounds of the league what what dublin can be capable of and in the games this year against uh, against wexford and, uh, and all the games they played but just that day against Kilkenny, it just I was I was devastated leaving the place. I, I just wanted to hang my head by half time um and leave and I was I was just I was in bad form. Um my poor wife having to come with me and having to listen to me the whole way home in the car it wasn't easy <laughs> for her either. But um I, I do believe they can bounce back. I do believe there is a there's a performance in them this weekend. Um like the, the team they had out the last day. Look I suppose you can look at this from a few different point of views. Um, Donald Burke is the main threat in forwards, without a doubt, from freeze and, and from play. Give him a, a, a yard of space and he has a point scored. If he can be nullified, you're kind of wondering where can other scores come from. I know uh, Fergal Wiley will score two, two, maybe three points. Reem McBride had a very good day the last day. Ron Hayes. Can blow off so hot and cold, like he he could go, he could go out and score two four, but then mightn't get a touch of the ball. Um, but we to beat Kilkenny, whether it's in Nolan Park, Parnell Park, or Crow Park, you need everyone um, playing to their their max. Um, can Dublin do that? Yeah, I've no doubt they can do it. Um, and I would I, I I truly believe they can win. I'm not just saying that for for airtime or anything like that, but. Everyone is going to have to to put their shoulders to wheel and, and fight. And that's something we didn't see in the league game against Kilkenny in Parallel Park. They, they played the game and they they go they went through the motions, but there was no 
fight, no raw aggression. I don't even know a better way of saying that, but like. But there the was. You would, you, would say, I, I, you would say you've seen it in the, in the Leinster Championship, though, right? Like in the Wexford game. I have. Yeah. Yeah. Look, again, against Wexford, I saw it against Leash. Leash, I saw it. I, I don't think they did a good day against Leash, but they still, they, they still came through with a win. Against Wexford, they, they were ahead the whole game. I know Wexford came back and, and could have pipped them, but they held on. Um, so th- there has been, there has been that dog of performance, but. In the Leinster Championship, they haven't been behind by two or three points yet. And hopefully they're not. But they haven't been behind by two or three points. And I'd love to see how they react if they go behind by two or three points. Or if Kilkenny score a goal from, from the throw in the ball goes up the field, they score a goal. How do Dublin react? And that's when you need the warrior. That's when you need the the that, that real... just that grit between your teeth with raw aggression and passion. And I don't mean aggression as in hitting someone off the ball, but just that 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 aggression that when the ball is on the ground and there's three or four lads around it, well, I'm coming out with that. No matter who's in there, I'm coming out with that. That's the aggression that I didn't see in Parnell Park in the league game, but I hope to see uh, this weekend. Okay. You think they can win. I need a prediction. Will they win? Yeah. Um, I think they can win um, but like I said I think everything needs to go their way uh, you look at the Kilkenny team um, from what from what I can gather and from what the stories I've been hearing I hear, I hear Hugh Lawler's out with a broken hand um, you might shed light on that uh, he's going to be a massive loss um, he kept Ron Hayes very quiet I think if there's someone else in there depending on who it is Ronan could be could be given that that room to, to expose the Kilkenny backline, but I, I I think look, you know what Kilkenny are gonna bring. Kilkenny are gonna bring aggression. No matter they, they could be going out and having a game of cards and they'll bring aggression to it. It's just the it's in their breeding, it's their culture, it's it's what they do, it's what they're known for. Um I do think Dublin can win it, but I do and I hate saying this, I do think um Kilkenny will will pip them. Okay. Uh that's fair enough. Uh in the other important games this weekend, uh, we've kind of reached a, a weird point where uh, it looks like both Cork and Tip are going to go out at the round robin stages of. The, yeah, of well, one. look, Tip Tip have one game left and and they've no points, so the most they can get is two points next week against Cork. Cork still have a chance of gathering four points for the next two games. So they, they do have an outside chance. Like Watford have two points um, and they have a few games left. So anything can happen. Watford have to go to Ennis. So like, yeah, no. look, anything can happen. But I, I do, I do, I hate saying it, but I do, I do see Cork and Tip gone. Um, and not gone, but like it's terrible thing to say. But yeah, I, I don't think they're going to get through to the, the All Ireland series. Um, I heard people talking about a moral victory for Tip at the weekend and I did think things have changed a lot where we're talking about moral victories for a Tipperary team that is festooned with All-Ireland winners and that has underage success coming slowly through so is it just a period of transition and a horrific injury list and that's a weird thing that happened this year as opposed to being anything more terminal than that? Yeah, look, I, I think I, I think Colin Bonner has, has a tough job ahead of him. Um, and the reason it's going to be tough is not the transition. I think it's the, the tip public. I really, really hope the tip public give him time because Colin is a great man. He's a club mate of mine. Um, and I'd be friendly with him. And I'm not just saying this because I'm friendly with him. But I, I do think he could be the man to, to bring tip back to the top table. I'm not saying he'll win in All-Ireland with them. But he will he will get them competing again. Um but I just think the, the the tip public can put him under pressure. I do think last week, and I hate saying it about tip, last week, yeah, it was a moral uh, a moral victory. Um and it just showed that look, you th- there will be a, a transition of giving the new lads and new lads, I mean the younger lads, giving them time 
yeah, if they, if they do get a, a beaten in one or two games, that's fine. But they're getting up to the pace of inter county level. Like you can have a brilliant county under under twenty player, and the the game is fast and skillful. But then as soon as you go up to senior, it's fast, skillful. But you're also adding the physicality to it and the dark arts of uh, someone that's hurling for ten years senior in the county. That yeah, they might be slower than you. But they know when to make the run. They know how to to get in front of you, and they know how to stop you. So I, I I think give them give them a bit of time. I'm not saying Tip will win All Ireland, but they they Colin Bonner certainly will bring them back up to the top table. All right. So uh, final one is then. You think that Waterford are going to win this weekend and not Cork out straight away, or Cork might limp on to next weekend. It might not be enough anyway. The facts that it's in Walsh Park in Waterford, I do think Waterford are going to win. Um, I think I do think I do think I Cork could win, but right now I fancy Waterford. Um, I know I've been very indecisive in my result um, in my uh, predictions today, but I do think Waterford will win. I think they'll have enough um, for Cork and could win it pulling away. All right, it'll be good either way. Ryan, good stuff. Thanks a million for joining us. Cheers. No problem. Thanks a million. Chat to you soon.